Oh, no. Some people have the end of the month blues. What am I talking about? And I'll be back in a minute. Good morning, good morning. This is Jan from New York City. I love helping people keep some more of their own hard-earned money. Could that be you? This is considered to be the bare bones time of the month for many people. The end of the month, yeah, 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 could be a little sooner for you. Whatever that period of time is for some people, many people, about 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. So there may be that, you know, right before you need to get paid, time of the month where like, you know, like your bare bones mealing, you know what I mean? I've learned something that it really works, that there is a method and it is no fail. And it's all about the method. And it's all about a little bit of pre-planning too. Let me just give you a typical example. Here's the method. If you always have a little bit of protein, a little bit of vegetable and definitely starch, you got yourself a meal no matter what time of the month. But here's the trick. In the beginning time of the month, I'm just using that as the example that let's say that some people are living a more abundant life, if you will, uh, as far as food goes at the beginning time of the month. That's the time to really plan things out so that the last week of the month isn't so horrific. All right. Now, many people do this method and they rely, for example, on let's say canned beef or canned chicken or canned tuna or canned pork as their reliable source of protein that they could count on. And it is a wonderful method and I highly do recommend it. I do definitely recommend it. Always keep stuff like that in your pantry at all times. It's just a good go-to thing to do. Also canned ham. And sometimes during the holiday season, you could get those cute little, the cute little versions of canned ham and keep it available. You could always throw a meal together, okay? You got your protein readily available right then and there. But there's something that a lot of times people overlook. For example, let me give you a little example. We recently just went through the Thanksgiving season, uh, Thanksgiving holiday weekend, okay? How many people, I wonder, I really, really wonder, if the carcass of the bird ended up as food waste, okay, and not used to make, let's say, a future broth, for example, um, that, that really is a waste or people, uh, uh, discarded, uh, carcasses that were like, really still had quite a lot of meat on it. For example, they could have cleaned off that a little bit better off the bone, put that meat, packed it up, let's say in a, you know, baggy type of thing in a freezer bag, and then just wrap it up and put it in the freezer for whenever, especially bare bones time of the month. When you could use that protein that you already paid for. See, here's the thing. We are, we don't mean to be, I don't think we do, but many times people are wasteful. They're overlooking opportunities, okay? So, I mean, there are many wonderful go-to meals that you could put together in a New York heartbeat. You can make your own rice. Uh, you could add, let's say, whatever you preserved and saved in your freezer, those bits of beef, chicken, pork, turkey, whatever it is that you were wise enough to save in the beginning time of the month, you could add that together with some vegetables of choice and you got yourself a meal. Some people use thickeners like uh, gravies to add to it. Some people create soups out of this. Some people create casseroles. It is really all about a method, a method of putting things together. Let's take a look at sandwiches for a minute. Okay. All right. Well, you're saying to yourself, what does that have to do with it? Well, let's again elude back to anytime you have a, you make a poultry dish from scratch, like a roast chicken or a roast turkey, for example, try to get as much meat off the bones. Even if it looks like, like little scraps, put it together, do not waste it. And you could even make, for example, uh, sometimes people underestimate. They could make a wonderful chicken salad or turkey salad. Chop in your, your onions, your celery, add a little bit of mayo if that's what you like, or maybe some type of another dressing. And you got yourself uh, the basics, basis for making a wonderful sandwich. These things add up. Everything that you have done, all this little pre-planning, and what does it take? 
but exactly a minute to pre-plan. You know, sometimes as much as, you know, the canned meats are very, very uh, convenient, at times the prices of those can be from the sublime to the ridiculous, okay? And I personally find them highly salty. Uh, for example, the canned roast beef, I did try it. If it wasn't so, if it was not so salty, I would have enjoyed it more. All I tasted was sodium, but that's me because I, I don't really care for overtly salted food. But again, again, I say that's me. Um, and to pay a lot of money for something that's highly salted, mm, not really. Because if I could get that chicken or beef in its more natural state, because I roasted it myself. So don't overlook that. Can your own chicken, if you will. But I don't mean necessarily in a tin can. <laughs> I mean, uh, save it as much as possible. Clean off those carcass and bones. Um, really do a good job with that. Put Wrap that up. Put it in the freezer. It's all about method. Now, for those who are watching or listening, <coughs> excuse me a second. If you're not interested, and the whole world does not eat meat, okay? And I recognize that. That's simple. That's simple. You could take the same method. You can make yourself a vegetable uh, stir fry at any time. You, all you have to do is not utilize those uh, proteins, those meat proteins, and you got yourself a, a really good budget-friendly meal. Now, does it always have to be rice? No. <coughs> Excuse me again. Boy, these allergies really stink. Just saying, just saying. All right. It does not always have to be rice. You could you could use other uh, starch components. You could use small pastas. You could you could work with uh, with breads. You could work with uh, uh, some people use quinoa. Some people use you know whatever it is. If if that's whatever it is that your favorite that your family you know that your family is going to enjoy. Another thing I'm noticing that sh that really is a super duper uh, budget stretcher, especially during um, you know those bare bones time to be able to know how to make your own gravies with your own thickening sauces. The method, the method is so simple. The, the ideas and the methods are there for the taking. People do spend a lot of money on those canned sauces and prepared sauces when easily one can make them. And the ingredients are so, so basic. Basically, one of the best things to keep on hand in your life is absolutely bouillon. Bouillon of choice. It could be chicken. It could be beef. It could be vegetable, okay? It could be some of them are tasting like chicken bouillon, and they're not even made from chicken bouillon. Just look around and try to get the best possible prices for that. Because once you have that, and once you learn how to make your own sauce, it's just a little bit of a the method is simple, but it's just a little bit of a skill to know how to get it to a perfected uh, texture. You won't need to rely constantly on buying a canned, uh, canned cream of soup type thing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And I do suggest people keep a few of those in your pantry for those extremely busy nights. But to be able to make your own sauces as really is a budget and a really, really good meal stretcher. I know that these methods work. I know that we always uh, try our best, but we could even try a little bit better. Why not? At the end of the day, of the day, if it helps stretch our food budget a little bit more, why not? Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to take care of yourself and your wonderful family. Have a great day.